Chà hộp chứ Hộp bài chiên đọc xa nám Bà hộp bài chiên đọc xa nám Đó là cái mô phần nịt Mà nịt mơ Cái thằng đồn nó ngay miên chiết Chà nịt The well has long been seen As the key to sustainable development Build a well Provide water to a community And bring health and security Into people's lives but for many Cambodian families, the water pumped from their wells is contaminated with poison. In the past 10 years, many communities have been made aware that their primary water source is contaminated with arsenic. At the turn of this century, the World Health Organization and the Cambodian government conducted a nationwide survey of drinking water quality. This was the first confirmation that arsenic was present in groundwater sources. Andrew Shantz, water researcher and environmental engineer, explains. Um, and it was a, a survey, a nationwide survey, of uh, approximately 1,000 groundwater wells um, all spread out all across the country. And uh, teams went to those wells and collected water samples. And the, there were no laboratories in Cambodia at the time, so those samples were shipped overseas and analyzed uh, overse overseas. And then that's when the first uh, encounter with uh, arsenic was found in, in Cambodia. Subsequent testing was conducted in communities across the country. Contaminated wells were marked, often with a slash of red paint. Arsenic was found to be prevalent in groundwater within a specific region of Cambodia, notably in regions alongside the Mekong River and its tributaries. This provided a vital clue to why arsenic was found in groundwater in the first place. High concentrations of arsenic are primarily found within the, the deltaic formations that have their origins uh, from the Himalayas. So the current theory is that um, uh, arsenic uh, sediments are flowing down or coming down from the Himalayas uh, into the various um, uh, deltaic uh, river systems such as the Ganges, the Red River Delta, the Mekong Delta as well, and then being, being deposited uh, in the ground over time. And as the uh, terrain builds up, these, these de arsenic deposits in the sediments are then uh, un deep underground. And so hundreds, if not thousands of years after these, uh, these systems are occurring and happening, uh, people are, are, have now been drilling wells into those aquifers and tapping into the contaminated uh, arsenic aquifers. For these communities bordering the Mekong River, the health consequences are frightening. Arsenic is invisible to the eye and the palate and can take years of build-up before any symptoms are revealed. Arsenic 
so one of the most um, widely known health problems associated with uh, arsenic is arsenicosis. And this is um, simply put a blistering of the hands and of the feet and sometimes uh, of the chest as well. So these are the visible manifestations, the visible signs of arsenic poisoning. What's not visible uh, or what's not commonly visible is the internal cancers, bladder cancers, uh, lung cancers, liver cancers, as well as the visible forms of skin cancer as well that arsenic can cause. So arsenic is a very potent carcinogen and uh, there's a variety of different internal cancers that can be caused as a result of long-term prolonged consumption. NGOs are now prevalent in many of the afflicted areas. 1001 Fontaines is one such organisation, working in the arsenic contaminated communities just across the river from the capital, Phnom Penh. <coughs> The contaminated wells themselves are often still in high use. But there are many ways in which the water from these wells can still be used safely. When this water is ingested into the body, it can cause problems because arsenic is a, a potent tox uh, a toxin. But uh, for washing and bathing and cleaning, uh, if, if it's just dermal contact with the skin, there's not enough ingestion through the skin uh, in order to cause any health concerns. But it might not only be the water that people drink that is of concern. In the dry season, contaminated water is widely used in irrigation. A lot of research is being done in Bangladesh now about irrigation using arsenic contaminated water and some varieties of rice are more prone to uptaking the arsenic into the actual grains and some research now is showing that there's actually uh, unsafe levels of arsenic in the rice grains themselves that people are consuming. So this is another exposure pathway that we now need to worry about uh, as this uh, situation evolves. This is of obvious concern in countries where rice is a staple of people's diets. But researchers in Cambodia are guarded in their response. With irrigation, it's not being widely uh, dealt with on a, on a large scale basis at all. Uh, and that's just because of the overriding health concerns associated with the drinking water consumption. So when you look at or when you compare the drinking water exposure to arsenic versus rice, the drinking, uh, drinking water exposures are much, much higher, significantly higher um, in terms of the severity of the health consequences. We found during our filming that there were many instances in which this water is still being consumed. New wells continue to be built in affected areas without any regulation or testing, as this well builder explains. <laughs> Wells are often used communally, and the red marks that once warned people to stay away have now faded. There are still many ways in which communities may be encountering arsenic in their daily drinking water and not even know it. About 100 to 150,000 people that are still exposed to arsenic um, through drinking water consumption of, of, from groundwater wells. 
and uh, some households are consuming that water year round, but the majority of households are exposed to that during the dry season. When the rainwater is exhausted, when it runs out, they turn to another alternative water source. What's the most convenient water source? It's most often uh, the tube well that's next to their house or, or close by. <laughs> Recently, the Cambodian government collaborated with NGOs and UNICEF to develop a national action plan on arsenic mitigation. But continued outreach and education to communities is limited. We contacted the Ministry of Rural Development to comment on this story, but received no response. Well, uh, first of all, you have to have your well tested. Uh, so that's really the first thing. And right now there's, there's poor mechanisms to get a, 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 a well tested. Right now there's what we call blanket surveying and, bl and blanket testing, but there's no ongoing monitoring. There's no effort to go back to a village every year to give people the opportunity to uh, have their wells tested on a regular basis. For the Mekong communities here, arsenic contamination is an issue that is here to stay. And much still needs to be done to ensure that these communities are not ingesting this poisoned water. <laughs> Cảm ơn các bạn đã theo dõi và hẹn gặp lại.